Welcome to Banjo Quest number 17. I'm really excited to reveal the next module of Banjo Quest today. Today we are covering one of my very favorite banjo players who has not gotten her fair due, I think, in banjo teaching and playing, and that is Matoki Slaughter. And we're going to be learning Big Eyed Rabbit, and we're tuned to F, F, G, C, D. I'll play that for you again without me talking. This is one of my favorite alternative tunings, and it's far more flexible than you would think on first glance, but we'll get into that later on in the module. Today, we're just going to be learning the first passage of the tune. When I was first learning banjo, I came across Charles Faroe's three-volume Clawhammer banjo album set, and I can't name many albums that I think literally changed the course of my life, but these three albums definitely did. And one of the standout players on those albums is Matoki Slaughter. She is in my pantheon of the ultimate Clawhammer players of all time, and I'm really excited to dive into her version of Big Eyed Rabbit today and this alternate tuning. It's really, really interesting and a beautiful tuning for the banjo and a beautiful way to play Big Eyed Rabbit. Now this is not related to the Round Peak Big Eyed Rabbit tune made famous by people like Tommy Jarrell. This is a different tune entirely, so uh, let's just get right out of the gate and think of it as a totally separate thing, especially if you go into a jam and call this tune and expect people to play the Matoki Slaughter version, you will be sorely disappointed and surprised. So one of the reasons why Matoki Slaughter isn't covered much is because she does some up-picking. I am a pure claw hammer player. I really love claw hammer. So I am using pure claw hammer as a lens through which to view Matoki's playing. So this is a little bit different than the way I've handled things in the past where I've gone back to historical players and tabbed them out note for note. This I'm using some interpretation. So that I just wanna be clear on that right out of the gate. All of the tab for this module will be available to my patrons over at Patreon. I'm giving you guys uh, some detailed tab. I'm also gonna supplement these lessons with some simplified tab for beginners. So anybody at any level can jump in on this tune. Don't be daunted by the recording, which is linked below. Matoki is playing really fast and it's an unusual tuning. So to our ears, it may sound like a barrage of a lot of notes and a very difficult and steep hill to climb. I'm going to simplify it for you guys. And I believe that pretty much any level of banjo player who has a basic grasp of right and left hand technique will be able to learn this tune and play it at a moderate tempo. But for those of you advanced players, we are going deep on this. And I'm going to add a third part to the tune that I have written, and I will share that with you later on in the module. All right, let's get started. So we're going to look at the very first line, the A part of Matoki's playing, and I just wanna set the groundwork here by giving you a very basic version. I'm gonna play that version for you, and we are going to cycle a figure within the A part as our lesson for the week. Let me play you the A part and I will take out the loop that I'm talking about that we're going to cycle for this week. And then next week we'll get into the B part. Let me play you the A part at a brisk tempo. Don't panic, I do have tab available for patrons and I'm going to slow down the loop that we're going to be looking at this week. Here's the A part. All right, in the loop we're learning this week, we're gonna go nice and slow. bit faster. And let's get this thing cooking. All 
All right, this is a really beautiful tuning. As you can already hear, it's very interesting and it's relatively easy to play in. What I want you to think about for this week is making sure that those notes are ringing out and are beautiful sounding. Also, place your ring finger on the third fret of the first string for all of your first string fretting work in this tuning because it, it puts you in the uh, chord shape, the basic chord shape, which is F major. It gets you in that region so you can easily grab that chord. Now this chord is the one of the scale, so it's our root chord, it's the chord we're going to be operating out of, and this will give us some insight into how we can use the Nashville number system. I'm going to dive into that later on in the module. For those of you who don't know how to use the Nashville number system, it's a very convenient way to think about chord progressions in a given tuning. So, work on this. Next week we will be diving into the B part. All tab is available at Patreon. Thanks so much for all of my patrons. You guys make this happen, and I deeply appreciate it. I'll see you guys next week on Banjo Quest.